What's that one disgusting thing that everybody except you seems to like? Pictures with babies being gross, like with spaghetti all over their faces and that sort of thing. I do not get the appeal and doubt I ever will. I was at the airport last week and where I was queuing to board the plane, there was a long poster. I think it was for ING Bank and it was like a collage of different life moments. People getting married, playing at a park, graduating, people hugging, etc. The very last picture was a baby absolutely covered in spaghetti, all over his head and torso and his sister, about three years old, also covered in spaghetti and rubbing it into his hair. Made me gag a little, like all I could think was how gross and annoying that would be to clean up and how the kid would stink of spaghetti and drool. One of my work colleagues, he's the biggest douchebag and poser ever, but except me, everyone seems to like him. Don't you hate that? I've known a few people that were absolute rotten assholes, yet they seem to have so many people love them. It makes me feel like I'm going crazy sometimes. The people who I've known like that are extremely outgoing and liven up parties. So instead of seeing them for the douchebags that they are, everybody loves them because they're fun wasted or totally unpredictable in crazy ways. Check out Chet. He's doing headstands on the pool table and chugging drink through his nose while singing It's the End of the World as We Know It. Dude's dated nine women in the last year and three of them have restraining orders. One dropped out of college to move back home and get away from him. Oh, come on, man. Why you gotta be like that? Chet's hilarious. Chet, 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 Chet. Those mukbang videos that have millions of views. My roommate used to watch these all the time and they were so disgusting to me. Makes me feel sick watching people stuff their faces and chew so loudly with their mouths wide open. Disgusting. Yeah, I get food travel vlogs, I get food reviews, hell, I even get competitive eater Matt Stoney challenge vids, but seeing people eat huge amounts of food while chewing loudly, smacking their lips off, and most irritating for me, sucking in food that's too much for a single bite, nope. Those social media videos of food being made with so much heavy and greasy crap. You know, the type where it's a whole burger cooked into a quesadilla with a pound of cheese and then fried and covered in three different sauces. I hate those videos because sometimes the food starts looking good, then they add more and more and more, then they always get out a stupid squeezy bottle and coat every inch in sauce and I'm sitting here like, holy crap, you ruined it five steps ago, yet you're still going. You'd like the comic book Get Jiro. Weird dystopian fiction where chefs are allowed to enforce quality food control, at the point of a sword if they so choose. Lip injections. You look like a clown. I don't get it. That combined with the fake eyelashes just makes people look absolutely ridiculous, like a cartoon ostrich. Games designed to be addictive instead of fun to suck money out of you. I like my addictive games to be designed to be as fun as possible with a one-time upfront payment. Thank you very much. I could buy 10 absolutely amazing masterpieces I could spend tens of hours with per game and remember them for decades for the price of a bunch of energy and cosmetics in some crappy mobile game with a dev budget lower than the coffee budget of the advertising department. Yeah, I hate it. The weird, addiction-focused style of games seems to be seeping into AAA titles as well, and it has really been bothering me. This is because microtransactions are disgustingly effective. Celebrity Gossip You're telling me you didn't want to know these two strangers with little to no impact on your life just had a baby? Or they got divorced, and it's totally Celebrity A's fault, because they are such a demeaning but PG insult. People who slam their friends' faces into birthday cakes. Just stop. Or wedding. I paid $300 for my hair and makeup to not have cake all over it. My family was a little worried my husband and I would do that. I'm not sure why, we both hated it. My husband wanted to feed me a tiny slice with a fork because he thought it was cute. Zit popping videos. Oh yes, someone finally said it, it's disgusting. Bro, does anybody actually like that stuff? Reality TV shows. I really appreciate reality TV shows. I can be lazy bookkeeping wise, but when every channel ever decided they need to replace every other form of the show with them, I'd finally had enough. So for the last decade or so, I've been saving at least $50 a month and probably much more. Reality TV shows basically gave me over $6,000 at this point by weaning me off from any non-streaming sort of video. I reached this point in the 90s. I realized I was coming home from work and watching TV that I didn't really enjoy. I'd waste hours every day on it. Finally, in a fit of self-loathing, I disconnected my TV and put it in the closet. I knew I was too lazy to go dig it out. I got back a nice usable chunk of the living room became much more productive and got more sleep. 
When I went back to school, I sold my TV and hooked a VCR up to an old computer monitor, pre-VGA. It had RCA inputs to watch the occasional movie. I honestly never missed TV. When I got married, I didn't want another TV, but my wife insisted. I've watched some TV over the years, but I still get most of my entertainment from the web. About four years ago, she got sick of the TV too. We cut the cord and switched to streaming services. We later gave up on most of those as well. I like not having the TV on. Home is so much more relaxing without it. My mother is getting up there in age, so my wife spends a lot of time at her house. We eat with her most evenings. She still has cable. It's amazing how much I've come to loathe Lifetime, Dr. Phil, Judge Judy, true crime dramas, etc. Oh, and Dr. Pimple Popper should only be available on the web after age verification and signing some form of waiver. Yuck. I truly believe dumping TV has turned out to be a serious improvement in my quality of life. It may not be that way for everyone, but I doubt I'll ever go back to it. Well, I know I can't be the only one that finds them disgusting, but long, fake nails. Unless you have a serious case of hand-washing OCD, there's no way that can be hygienic. I lost a job once because a recruiter with long nails mistyped my social security number. The company fired me rather than just confronting me about potential identity fraud. People that let dogs lick their mouths. What is wrong with them? They'll often quote some bull urban myth about dogs having sterile saliva or some such self-deceiving rubbish so they can feel okay about their perverse desire to tongue kiss dogs. My dog tries to lick my face and I just move my face just a few centimeters out of reach or put my hand between his tongue and my mouth because I know he licks himself. Deep fried butter and deep fried mayonnaise. It sounds so gross, but everyone seems to eat it at state fairs or amusement parks. Clipping your nails anywhere outside of your house. If you are in a nail salon, that makes sense, but if you are at work or on the bus, just don't. I got these really cool old bedside tables for $5 each to do up. They're solid wood. You couldn't get them that cheap at the store. I was so excited anyway. I've had them in storage a few months and I got them out to sand and my daughter, two years old, opened the bottom drawer and was looking at something gritty. I looked and it was a pile of fingernail clippings. I threw up in my mouth a bit. Something very similar happened to me. Bought a secondhand bedside table from Gumtree for PS5. When I got it home, I opened the bottom drawer full of all these bits. I put my hand in and brought some out while trying to figure out what I was looking at. And yep, lo and behold, thousands of nail clippings. It's making me wretch just thinking about it. Honestly, have never seen so many nail clippings in my life. I mean, what the heck? Is that a thing people do? Collect their nail clippings? There must have been years and years worth in there. Grossest thing ever. Anything Kardashian. I agree, but to be fair, by this point, I think I've seen far more people complain about the Kardashians than I have people actually talk about them positively. Honestly, if people would stop complaining about them, I'd forget they exist at all. ASMR. I struggled with intrusive thoughts that gave me mild insomnia for like years until I found ASMR. I mostly listened to whispering ones because they helped me feel like I had someone else with me, keeping me calm and not letting my thoughts wander. Eventually, I started to like sleeping instead of dreading it, oftentimes wanting to sleep so badly, I just forgot to turn it on, and then, after more time, I could fall asleep normally. I don't listen to ASMR anymore, and if I do, it's usually whispering in foreign languages since I'll be reading, and if it's in English, it distracts me. Gender Reveal Parties I knew my child's gender, but I really can't think of a reason for it to be a party. Pictures with babies, or parents creating Facebook profiles in the name of their children, and those children are like three years old or less. I'd like to add family vloggers to this. Anyone willing to monetize their children through the invasive filming of their lives is absolutely disgusting. It's child labor and child exploitation in every sense of the word. Not to mention, imagine when the kids inevitably grow up and become their own people, which is most likely to rebel against their parents' values and target market. The scrutiny that they're going to face from strangers who think they know them because they've watched them grow up on YouTube. Screw that. Febreze Air Fresheners Febreze was originally unscented, but people thought it didn't work. It does, so they started adding scents to it. I'm not sure if they still sell unscented Febreze, but it's a pretty killer product. I'm not shilling, I just work around food and my clothes always stink. I only get the air variety, which if it does have a scent, it's very subtle. Whiskey. I have so many friends who love it, but the moment it touches my tongue, I gag immediately regardless of how expensive it is. I, and I suspect most people, forced myself to drink it, and one day something clicked and now I love it. It's weird. That's most alcohol you drink straight, honestly. 
boiled okra. Okay, this is a special southern answer to this question. It is so good when it's breaded and fried though, right? It becomes a deceptively different thing. Also very good grilled whole and dressed in salt, chili flakes, and lemon. Totally different from what people expect out of okra. Oysters, cockles, abalone, and all other snotty textured seafood, yuck. Anything people say not to chew, just to swallow whole so you don't really taste it, is a giant nope from me. So slimy. Do you know what I think is sick and weird? Why do some people take pictures of their dead or dying family members? Like, at the hospital with my aunt, and it's pictures of someone's aunt on breathing tubes, unconscious. It makes no sense to me why you would take pictures and put them on social media. This is one of the most cringeworthy things ever. It's so narcissistic and lacking in empathy. Truffles. The smell makes my stomach turn. I feel like there has to be some kind of bizarre conspiracy or truffle gatherer lobby or something for them to be so expensive. You really don't want to upset Big Truffle. Celery. Absolutely hate it. Can tolerate it dried or teeny tiny pieces in something like stuffing. But often people put giant chunks in soups, and out of everyone I've met, only one friend ever shared the same distaste for it. Same. I can have it chopped very finely in stews or soups, but I cannot stand the chunks. It tastes bitter to me and ruins anything that it's in. Being wasted or drinking. I don't know, I tried being wasted once and I didn't like it. I like being in control of my actions 24-7. Yeah, I hate the hangover part the worst. Also, my dad is a raging alcoholic, so I think he ruined the whole drinking to have fun part. Bananas. The smell of ripe bananas makes me want to throw up. I have not met anyone else that dislikes ripe bananas. I also hate ripe bananas. They're too sweet and the texture is awful. I like them while they're mostly green or greenish yellow, but as soon as the brown spots appear, they're going in the trash. Any meat that comes in a can. Gross. Growing up poor, you'll eat what you can get. Oysters. They're just like snot. And before you say you've got to try oysters kill Patrick, adding bacon and sauce will make anything taste good. Yeah, in that case, much better to skip the oysters and just have the bacon and sauce. Blue cheese, followed by lamb. Both, equally, leave a disgusting aftertaste that gasoline could not get rid of. Drink. I've tried every type from IPA to lager to ale. I even work in a bar that prides itself in having over a hundred different kinds or brands or whatever of drink. It all tastes bad, like watery bitterness with very little difference in flavor. Oh, you're saying that cool new blueberry drink really tastes like blueberries? No, it doesn't. Why would you lie to me like this? I was looking forward to the taste of blueberries combined with some carbonation and a hint of alcohol, but all I got was blue bitter carbonated crap with a lingering sense of betrayal. This is why I stick to cocktails and ciders, because at least that crap has flavor. With a lingering sense of betrayal has to be one of the best ways I've ever seen anyone describe anything edible and disappointing, lol. But as a fellow drink hater, totally agree. I've tried many, even those that people told me didn't really taste like a drink. Liked none. They say it's an acquired taste, but why would anyone subject themselves to drinking something they don't like until they do? Kids acting like brats. My close friend got married recently, and at the rehearsal dinner, the husband's four to five year old nephew wouldn't stop talking, refused to walk down the aisle, he was the ring bearer, and threw a tantrum when he couldn't play with his dinosaur toys. The entire time, everybody was laughing like it was the cutest thing on the planet. It's crazy to me when people think that kind of behavior is funny or adorable. I wanted to hear this. I have a friend who I refuse to go over to his place because their kid is a nightmare. She will throw things and just scream for no reason and they just go, honey, please don't do that. And when she continues, they just let it happen. And if she cusses, they die laughing. I kind of lost respect for them for their parenting mushrooms. You know when you're washing dishes and some gross piece of food floating in the water touches your hand? That's what mushrooms taste like. I absolutely despise ketchup. My boyfriend says it's very un-American of me. I never liked it even as a child. If you're wondering what I dip my fries in, I use barbecue sauce a lot or buffalo sauce. Raw tomatoes. Something about the juice just makes me want to vomit. A grown woman using a baby voice on purpose. Coriander, you're probably an unfortunate soul that has that gene that makes it taste like soap. I love cilantro, luckily. I detest spaghetti. I have no idea why. I don't like it, though. Water, I cannot stand water. For me, it's disgusting unless it's some flavored carbonated water. I don't know. Fish and seafood, it's disgusting and I hate it. Tried to eat it, but it's just not for me. Buffet-style restaurants. I hate it when other guests mess around with the food I eat, even before COVID. Nutella isn't that great. 
It's nauseating after a teaspoon of it, actually. I'm aware you're supposed to put it lightly on a piece of toast or a croissant, but in the food hellhole that is America, I've come across Nutella-filled donuts, croissants and crepes with half a cup of Nutella filled in them. Cookies and brownies, already sickening sweet, have at least a cup of Nutella just jammed in the middle, like some unholy cream pie. Onions. Like, I can eat onion rings and bloomin' onions, but I cannot stand onions any other way, in sauces, soups, or any other food. They just overpower it and make everything taste like onion. Maybe they are just disgusting to me, but that's my two cents. James Corden. Can't stand the guy. He could be the kindest man in the world, but to me, he isn't funny, lacks any semblance of charm, and is just outright annoying to me. I don't get it. There are rumors that he actually is a huge asshole to people. Chocolate pizza. Everybody said to me it was so delicious, and then I tried it, but I really hated it. I know this guy at work that's a snake and will stab you in the back if it's in his best interest, but most people like him because he's polite and never swears. Bet he's religious, too. Being right all the time and contradicting people. Lip injections. Swear to my bones, they never end up looking good. I know quite a few women who have gotten lip injections and Botox. Thing is, if it's done properly, it will look good. But it's not like some Botox is going to make your 45-year-old skin look any younger. It's going to slightly improve your look, but only slightly. The problem is, those who then go absolutely overboard with it. I have an acquaintance who has gotten her lips injected. The first time around, it actually looked good. Her lips were slightly fuller, and it fit her face very well. Then she didn't stop getting injections, and now it's just painfully obvious and unattractive. Sour drinks. I just can't get into them. I'll drink an ale, a lager, even an IPA if the mood strikes me, but sours, the flavor, is just too strong for me. They're like all I can drink now, but I totally get it. Some can get really funky, almost vomit tasting. Not all sours are created equal though. I'm lucky enough to live in a city with tons of great breweries, and being able to taste small amounts makes it easier to weed out the ones you don't like. Yogurt. I've tried so many different kinds, and all of them taste like sour spoiled milk. I wish I liked it because it seems like such a cheap, easy, healthy snack, but I don't know how anyone enjoys it. Honey drizzled on pizza. There are people who like this? Mamma mia. I'm probably alone in this, but cinnamon. I can't stand the smell. Drooling over a nice car. Maybe I'm just boring, but as long as my car can get me from point A to point B, there's not much else I care about. I don't have a dream car or gasp like others do when a fancy car drives by. They all kind of look the same to me. Guacamole. It's gross. It's a texture thing and a taste thing. I don't like avocado too much, but I much rather just eat avocado. TikTok. I absolutely hate it. How much creativity does it really take to lip sync to somebody else's content? Straight garbage. Goat cheese. It has such a nasty, tangy taste to it that makes me sick. Goat cheese tastes like the smell of goats. That's because it's the same fatty acids. Caprice, caprice, and caprylic acid. Unsurprisingly named after the Latin word for goat. I might offend some people here, but matcha, and of course anything matcha flavored, food or drinks, it just leaves this disgusting residue in your mouth or some kind of weird aftertaste. I really don't get why people love the flavor. Also bananas. Why is its flavor so strong even when you mix a tiny bit of it in a drink? It's like a crime. Yes, matcha tastes like actual grass and dirt. I used to work at a coffee shop and whenever I needed to drink matcha for quality purposes, I would throw up every time to the point where I just can't be near it anymore. Fashion. Being a woman who isn't at all into shopping, clothes such as fashion, shoes, bags, jewelry, etc. can be a hard and lonely road. The fashion industry is horrifying and disgusting, populated with people and companies who steal and exploit, who perpetuate a worldview based on exclusion and elitism, and who pander to people's insecurities and consumerist addictions. They create overpriced sparkly things that distract for a second but leave the buyer endlessly wanting more of that empty hit. No thank you. Candy floss. It's disgusting. I don't understand how someone can eat a bit without throwing up. My only real memory of cotton candy, as it's known on my side of the pond, is vague. I think from very early childhood at a circus with very unhappy elephants and camels that I did not want to ride, crying because my hands were incredibly sticky, and despite begging to wash them, there were only porta johns with no running water available. This is before people carried baby wipes everywhere. I don't know how long it was until we left, but in the memory it feels like forever. I still hate cotton candy and everything cotton candy flavored. Not washing their hands after using the toilet. My father did that and I was like, you don't wash your hands with soap after a number two? Those round sugar cookies at the grocery store with chalk sprinkles and acid icing. Had one and my tongue has not stopped tingling since. 
That sounds like you're allergic to something. Bananas, disgusting things. The smell alone makes me sick. Corn. My grandmother literally force-fed me creamed corn when I was seven when I wouldn't clear my plate. It was a wrap after that. Holding babies. I've got so much fear that I would drop the baby. I'm too much in my own head to hold the baby with any confidence. Mint chocolate and ice cream. It tastes like toothpaste. Sloppy Joes. The smell makes me gag and I've never been able to eat them because of that, but everybody else in my family loves them. Pickles. Ditto. Although every so often if others are enjoying pickles and there are some out on a plate, I'll try one just to see if my taste buds have changed or if I've grown to like them. In fact, I did this less than a week ago. Still don't like them. Vegemite. Couldn't pay me to eat that crap. To be fair, only people in three countries actually like this stuff. I love it. Animal agriculture. People say they love animals, but upwards of 95% of people pay other people to kill animals. Seems pretty screwed up to me. Go vegan. Anything disgusting or gross is used as humor, like people joking about farting. It's not funny and it makes me pretty uncomfortable. Dude, same, I absolutely hate potty humor. Now every time I hear a stupid joke like that, the uh-oh, stinky meme pops into my head. Same energy. Twitch or similar streamers, and especially their fans. The weird parasocial relationships their fans form, the childish drama they always foster for content, the meltdowns over online games where adults often verbally accost actual children. The fans cheer on the most awful content and idolize the worst of them. I think it has made online gaming worse since it became popular with their fans, emulating the terrible behavior they see encouraged. You can say the same thing about lots of popular people, like celebrities, musicians, YouTubers, TikTokers, etc. Stuff like K-pop is much worse in that regard. It just sounds like you watch crappy streamers or think the vocal minority represents the entire community. 